words of Lord Byron in his poem, The Destruction of Sennacherib, the Assyrian came down like a wolf on the fold. OK, stop, stop. We're right in the middle of the courtyard. This is an absolutely fabulous vehicle for attacking castles because it's great defensive stuff. It can take fire, it can take spears, it can take rocks, everything. But if you're out in the open battlefield, you really need something a bit quicker. I've sent Hermione off to go and try and reconstruct one of the most fearsome weapons that the Mesopotamians had. Right, chaps, through the back of the castle. We can go anywhere with this thing. Aleppo in northern Syria claims to be the world's oldest inhabited city. People have lived here continuously for 8,000 years. It's had its fair share of strife. I've come here to try to recreate one of the earliest fighting machines, the Sumerian war chariot. I'm basing the design for our reconstruction on the magnificent four-wheeled chariots shown on the standard of Ur. Also discovered in the royal tombs at Ur were the remains of the distinctive solid wheels which bore the chariot into battle. These were basically mobile missile carriers, packed full with weapons and riding on four solid wheels. Is this my carpenter? No, I'm holding the job. Okay, shukram. Hi, good afternoon. I was wondering whether we could talk about the possibility of building a chariot. Should we go in? This is the chariot. This is a picture of the chariot that I want to get built. And this bit should all be made of wood. Mm, and these wheels look like that. They're solid wheels, no spokes. Yes, They're made of yes. three parts, the special Mesopotamian wheels. Mm. Now, what I've got here is a model of a toy chariot that was found in a 5,000-year-old tomb. So it's just a model. But it gives you an idea of what the chariot should look like. Yes. So, uh, yes. do you think you can build one? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Sure. 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 Thank you. While the carpenters get started on the chariot, I'm off in search of everything else I need. Luckily, the Aleppo souk is full of traditional shops and craftsmen. Through here? Okay, what I'm looking for is some spears, like long, tall, sharp, like a javelin. Do you have any of them? Yeah? Oh, yeah, these are great. This is just what I need. Perfect. One of the most vital parts of the Sumerian chariot was the rain ring. With it, the driver was able to control the donkeys okay, that pulled I'll the heavy that. vehicle along. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. The chariot wouldn't have been possible without what may be the greatest invention of all time, the wheel. Now, I thought you could just take a big log of wood, cut a slice out of it like that, and then stick an axle in the middle and you've got a wheel. But the trouble is, it doesn't work. For one thing, it splits. Just look, there are splits developing all around this wheel. It's absolutely hopeless. So they couldn't do that. Marty, what did they do? Well, what they came up with is this. This is what's called a tripartite wheel. You pitch it up like that. Tripartite, it's got three bits to it. One there, one plank there, a plank in the middle, and a plank there. Why couldn't they just take one big plank? Ah, oh, well, you see, the thing is, the size of your plank is dependent on the size of your trees. Yes. Because obviously the biggest plank you can have is... The same diameter as the tree. Yeah. tree. And they didn't have very big trees. Ah, so I, that would simple. slow them up. I do. So they, they, they made this out of the biggest trees they could get, the biggest planks they could make, and they you know, put several of them together. Now, wouldn't it be easier just to put one plank there and then one in the middle and one your side? Well, that's what they started doing, but then they developed this because it's stronger and it's got fewer joins at the edges. Ah, because if you had three planks, you'd have joint one, two, four. So you've got four joints. And now we've only got two. Yeah. But what keeps them sort of in line? Uh, well, in here, we've got a bunch of pegs. Right. Let's have a look. It's oh. There you go. So here we go. There's a bunch of little pegs here, which m meet up with holes in here, and that obviously stops the planks from sort of shifting out of alignment. And then just with some lashing, some string here and here, that holds it all together. Oh, yeah. That's quite cunning, isn't it? And what about the chunk in the middle? Well, this would have been um, an actual bit of a log 
uh, cut through with a hole drilled in it, right. and then sank into the middle. Obviously, it's not a very big log. Right. And then the axle goes through that. The axle just that. goes through there. Exactly. And this turns on the axle. Yeah, right. and then because it's so wide, it doesn't wobble around so much. Ah, oh, because if it was thin, it would wobble that exactly. way. Exactly. That's great. That's really quite simple, isn't it? Anyway, let's see how Hermione is getting on with her chariot. Got you the rain ring. Finished. This is fantastic. Hey, Mahaba. Mahaba. It's brilliant. God, it's amazing. Why is? Why is? Wow. God, you feel quite high up here, actually. Quite high. Now all we have to do is take it for a proper test drive. Our chariot has a two-mule power engine. We know the Sumerians would have used four highly trained donkeys capable of pulling their chariots at up to 20 miles an hour. It's a good solid wooden framework. Now, unlike the modern car, the leatherwork is on the outside. It was put on when it was wet, and as it dried, it pulled the whole bodywork of the chariot together, giving it added strength. We've got some built in road rage protection here, more rawhide on the outside of the wheel, and with these bindings, that's holding together the three solid bits of wood that make up the tripartite wheels. They were basically mobile missile launchers packed with weapons. One man drove while another hurled javelins. It's thought an expert javelin thrower could launch up to 30 javelins a minute. If necessary, he could jump off the back with an axe for a bit of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Ah! If they'd never seen one before, chariots like these would have been terrifying to the enemy. But what they didn't know was all they had to do was jump out the way because they were useless at turning corners. Why was that? Turning a vehicle like Hermione's Sumerian chariot was incredibly difficult. For one thing, it had a very high centre of gravity, so if you started to turn, it was liable to tip over. For another thing, these huge wooden wheels were on a fixed axle. Remember, it had four wheels, two axles, and the axles were fixed, so they couldn't turn. So they were being dragged sideways, and that meant that not only was the chariot likely to break up, but so were the wheels, because they're made in three parts, and they weren't, can't take sideways forces, which meant you could charge into battle, but it was a sort of kamikaze mission, because you couldn't turn around and come back again. All that changed with the Assyrians, who invented to start with the spoked wheel, much, much more efficient. For one thing, there are all these air spaces, so it's much, much lighter. And for another thing, it's strong in all directions, and you can turn this easily. And of course, you can turn it much more easily if you've only got two wheels. OK, let's go. Hermione's Sumerian chariot handles like a truck, but this is a sports car. Chariot design gradually evolved. They were improved by the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, and surprisingly by the Britons. But it was the Mesopotamians who got the whole thing rolling in the first place. In ancient Mesopotamia, civilization flourished five and a half thousand years ago. The invention of writing gave human beings history, which meant that the people who came afterwards knew about the thoughts and the deeds of their ancestors for the first time. The Mesopotamians gave us the wheel, farming, cities, bureaucracy, astrology, bread, beer, the list goes on and on. But a whole lot of their inventions were forgotten and had to be reinvented hundreds, even thousands of years later. Babylon was conquered by the Persians in 539 BC. And after the Persians came the Greeks and the Romans and loads of other people. But actually, it was those ancient Mesopotamians who more than anyone else shaped the world that we live in today.